In part 1 of this video, we tried to explain the basic idea of Grabada, using this model as an example. In the second part, we will show how to build this model from scratch. We can select New in the File menu to create an empty Grabada scene. But instead I use Open to load an empty scene with lighting more suitable for recording a clear screen capture video. Let's also go to the Light, light Options panel here and, and click uh, Lock Lights to Camera. This is what you typically want to do at the start of a modeling session. Your model will be well lit no matter where you look at it from. Another thing you would typically want to do as you start modeling is switch to the level camera here in the camera panel. You'll see why once we have something in the workspace. Modeling Grabada begins with bringing some primitive objects from the library here. The first primitive we want in this case is the box. Primitives can be dragged and dropped from the library. But in this case, it's more convenient to right-click on the box and choose Place at World Center. It's a simple symmetric model, it's easiest to build by placing its parts into the World Center and then moving them from there. The next thing we want to do is to make it larger by clicking on Global Scale in the Edit panel below and dragging to the right. This is a major part of our model, might as well make it larger. Next, we want to make it taller by clicking and dragging on Length in the Edit panel. Now we want to add another primitive, a barrel shape that we find in this Hyperod section. Note as you move the mouse over each primitive, a much larger image of it appears here below the library. Again, we right-click on the primitive, but this time we choose Place at Selection Center. It so happens that in this case the World Center and the Selection Center are the same, but it still makes a difference to choose Selection Center. The barrel is automatically resized to roughly the size of the box, the previously selected object. Actually, we want it somewhat smaller, so we resize it now by dragging on Global Scale. We also want to move it up by dragging on Y in the Move Tool widget. Y is the vertical direction. You can also switch tools and specify motion along a particular axis without moving the mouse away from the model. Pressing T cycles through the tools. Then pressing and holding 1, 2 or 3 const constrains the move, the move Tool to X, Y or Z. Here I am pressing 2. The Y axis becomes yellow, and I move the barrel along it. I'd also like to make the barrel a bit shorter. I press R for reshape, and the tool switches to global scale, which is one of the reshape options. I keep pressing R, and it cycles through all the other reshape options. What we want is length. We adjust the length to, to something like this. At this point, we might want to take a look at the model by orbiting the camera around it. The level camera is better for modeling because the model always remains upright no matter where you look at it from. If we switch to free camera, we can get the model to tumble arbitrarily in our view. When we switch back to level camera, it gets upright again. To orbit the camera without moving the mouse away from the model, press Ctrl and drag. We can see that the bottom of the barrel is showing here a little bit, and we don't want that. Now I'm holding uh, Ctrl and spinning the scroll wheel to zoom in. We can tuck the barrel in into the box by making the bottom radius a little smaller. I'm pressing R twice to switch from length to bottom radius, and then drag the mouse to adjust bottom radius. What's important is that when generating the mesh later, Grabata will pay close attention to what exactly is going on here. Even if the bottom shows just slightly, the mesh will have a separate surface for the bottom and these two very uh, distinct sharp edges. When we tuck the bottom in completely, 
The mesh in this area will be nice and smooth with no creases. Now let's zoom out with control scroll wheel and orbit the camera back to this U with control drag. So far we have just two regular objects, a box and a barrel. Now I'll start trimming them, shaving off parts of this object we don't need, using other objects as cutting tools. Before we begin, let us know that we have two objects here and we have a choice. We can trim them separately, where trims of one object do not affect the other object. Or we can trim them together, where trims are shared and shave off parts of this box barrel thing as if it's a single object. Let's choose the second alternative, treating this combination as a single object. Before any object or combination of objects can be trimmed, we have to designate them a boolean cluster. To do this we select the bool tool here, or press B, and then last of the objects we want to become a boolean cluster. To find out if an object is a simple object or if it belongs to a boolean cluster, you can right click on it. Here it says that the box has bool ID 1 and it is a primary or positive object. Primary is the object from which you can shave off pieces using trims. If we right click on the barrel we see that its bool ID is also 1 and it is a primary too. Having the same bool ID means that they belong to the same boolean cluster and will be trimmed together as a unit. Before we lasso them uh, with the bool tool, this info line for both showed bool ID none. <coughs> now that we have our boolean cluster, let's activate it for editing by placing the mouse over it and pressing E. A model can contain many boolean clusters, but only one of them can be edited at a time. As you can see, the body of the active cluster turns pale green and its primary objects are shown as wireframes, as well as solids. Now is the time to show the boolean panel. It is found here in Window Modeling Tools. Let's put it here. We have to remain within the frame of the screen capture program. What we want is the boolean tab of this panel. Here it shows the list of objects of the currently active boolean cluster. So far we have only two primaries, the box and the hyperrod, or barrel. What we want to shave off first of all is the square bottom of the box. We want the bottom to be round, something that will go well with the, with the round barrel here, only larger. In the library here we have a handy boolean trim section. These objects are the usual grabata objects, cylinders, spheres, etc. But what is convenient about them is that they have their trim roles pre-assigned. For instance, here we have a lip in body. As the picture shows, when you apply this trim, only what's inside the ellipsoid will remain. Everything outside will be shaved off. This is, one, uh, this is the one we want to use to make the bottom round. We right click on it and choose place at world center but in this Add to Current Cluster section, not the one we were using before. And here it is, and it's already trimming our cluster, but in the wrong place. First of all, it's too tight overall. Uh, let's enlarge it with global scale. Second, we only want to trim the bottom, not the top. So let's elongate it using length, and then move it higher. It's now well clear of the top. The trim ellipsoid appears now in the list here as ellipsoid inside body. The check mark means that it's selected. Now we want another trim to make the body of the cup hollow. That would also be an ellipsoid but with the oppos opposite trim roll, outside body. Here we have such a thing in the library. Let's right click on it, and again choose Add to Current Cluster Place at World Center. 
This one only allows what's outside of its body. And at its default size, it, it consumed everything. Not to worry, just make it smaller. Here we get some interesting shapes, like it frequently happens while doing dynamic boolean modeling. But let's not get distracted from our goal. We also make it shorter. Another interesting shape. And, and also move it up. This is about what we want. Uh, let's press E to exit the boolean cluster edit mode. And we don't need this anymore. Now let's add the stand. For that we can use another hyper rod here. Right click on it and choose place at world center. Its default size is pretty small, so it disappeared inside this large object. Uh, we can see it if we move it somewhere. We, we could have avoided this disorienting situation if we used place at selection center instead. So let's undo move object and undo create object. Uh, select the cup by pressing A over it. Then I right click on the hyper rod and choose place at selection center. Now it's automatically sized to roughly uh, match the selection size. Let's do control scroll wheel to zoom out and control drag to get a view from the side. First of all, it's, it's not much of a stand with a bulging bottom like this. So we use the cap depth parameter of the hyper rod here to get rid of that and even make the bottom slightly concave. We move it into position vertically, zoom in, reduce mouse sensitivity, then do slight adjustments of the top radius and vertical position to fit the two parts nicely to each other. We don't want any extra edges or notches here. Just make sure this radius is slightly larger than this radius and then move the stand up. Now let's switch to the quick line rendering mode and zoom in uh, and change the view angle to see closely what's going on here. We still have two distinct edges. Keep moving the stand up until we get just one edge and a little bit more. Now the top edge of the stand itself is safely sunk into the body of the upper part. And all we have left is the edge between the sidewall of the stand and the upper body. Keep in mind that when Grabana generates the mesh, it reproduces very literally every edge and wrinkle of the non-mesh model. And so here it is. In part 3 of this video, we are going to look into converting this model into mesh.